Kenny and I have like a seven year difference. So when I had started, it was in the early 80s and Kenny had come more towards the mid 80s. So, you know, when he was making music, cause he's a little younger than me. So um, it kind of just worked out and just one thing just went right into the other because as I blew up in New York City, I was a very big DJ in New York City for, for the Latino and African American crowd. And I was playing in a lot of the big clubs. So, I mean, the way we connected, it was perfect because Todd Terry was a mutual friend who came to the clubs to bring me the music to play for these kids. At the same time, Kenny was making records and I started playing some of his records. So it was just one song that connected us and created, you know, and made our connection, you know? It was crazy because um, I remember when Todd said, look, you know, Louis wants to do a remix to your record. And like he said, at that time, it was, it was, it was, he was here. Like he was doing really big nights in New York and he was like, he wants to remix your song. I was like, yeah, well, it's only two discs, so he can have the, the two discs. And, but it was crazy because um, we talked and we built on that and it just sparked the, the, the brand, you know what I'm saying? It sparked the production company and we took off. He never did the mix, but <laughs> we did all these other records. So it's, you know, and just a lot of records though. We got together, started talking about music, sharing beats and, you know, uh, and then we just said, let's, let's try something. And that was it. And at the same time, I was working on an album uh, on Atlantic Records. And I said, why don't you come to the studio? Because I'm booked there from like four to six months. Let's just try to, you know, create some stuff together. And he started coming up with a lot of the rhythm tracks for the When the Night Is Over album that I did with Mark Anthony. So that, that's how we kind of really got acquainted working every day in the studio. And when he came and we just got together, that's, that's really where the Masters That Work sound started. In, in that period of like three or four months when we were in that studio for like, you know, 12 hours a day, you know, just having fun, making music. Yeah, cause it was, it was, um, Louis was in a transitional period. He wanted to do more soulful stuff, you know what I mean? Um, and he said, look, you know, this is what I've done, which I knew because I played the records too and I sold the records and so on and so forth at the record store. This is what I've done, but this is where I want to go. I would like to go, and I would like to go with you. So I was like, yeah, that's cool. That's easy. You know, let's, let's do it. You know, so basically that's how the whole Masters of Work dub was, came about because he wanted to do more darker stuff, you know, more deep house, you know what I mean? That's, that's when we started doing it. It was always different for us. You couldn't really put us in one place, you know, because the early times when we did all those tracks, I guess the dubs that most of the DJs love our dubby side and our, they always say that, even the techno guys, they always say we love what you guys did in the early days. And that was Kenny and I making records alone. That's just him on the beats and me on the keyboards. Once we started getting acquainted with all these great musicians, we were like, damn, we could go there, well, hold up. It was just, it was just took it to a whole different place, but we always kept that base of samples and that, that yeah. powerful beat. You know what I mean? That was very important to us. That was what was, was so special about that time period. You know what I mean? Um, DJs played different styles. It wasn't like you went to a club just to hear one specific genre. You know what I mean? Um, so we came up on that. You know what I mean? We, we learned, you know, I learned from that, you know, from watching guys older than me play it. and. Like he said, the Bambadas and the Jazzy J, you, you would hear alternative, you would hear punk records, you would hear rock records, everything. It didn't matter if it was good, they played it. Like the first, I would say from 90 to like 97 till about New Year Week or so, that's when I realized, wow, like we just did all this music because it was nonstop. I wasn't, I didn't think about anything that was going on. You know what I mean? It was constant and at that photo shoot, when we did New Eureka So and when we saw everybody there, we said to each other, it was like, we did some shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because it was just like, we saw all these acts and all these artists and all these musicians. It was like that we grew up to. So it was like, yeah, we definitely did something. Yeah, you know, something special that's gonna last a long time, you know? Yeah, that period of 90, 90 91 to 97, I mean, we were working like 16 to 18 hours a day. I'm talking about it was, there was no personal life. We were, we were the personal life with each other. You know what I mean? In the studio, we just lived it. The most special thing about it too is also um, 
you know, we kind of came up with this thing. It was like, look, if, if you don't like something, say it, it's deleted. If I don't like something, I'm going to say it and it's deleted. No questions asked. We move on to the next. Let's just make the best possible records that we can make. You know what I mean? Um, and that's it. No egos, none of this bullshit. Like, you know, nah, I'm stuck with this. Nah, let's just move on. Like, let's just keep it moving. And, and that's, you know, that was it. Like he said, every drum track was from scratch um, for that particular project or that artist. You know, we was on the phone in the morning before the session, boom, 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 go over some ideas, knock it out, and then go to the studio. Sometimes there was days that we slept there. Sometimes we just had a bag. You know, there was a studio we worked at a battery in New York that had a shower. So it was like, you know, we took showers. We stood there. We just lived there. You know what I mean? And, and because, you know, there was no time to go back to Brooklyn or the Bronx to or New York to just because once you're home, you don't want to leave, you know what I mean? So it's like, you know, you go to sleep or something and you miss a session. So, nah, there was no time for that, you know? Well, basically, it's what hasn't been put out. You know what I mean? That's the main thing. It's like there's so much music and there's also been a lot of compilations, you know, that have been done before. So it's really to try to pick joints that either got, you know, overshadowed or missed or unreleased or whatever the case may be. Yeah, I think the balance as well, because there's so many records that uh, a lot of people know us for, but at the same time, there's an audience that hasn't really heard some of those records too. The only kids that know us that are young like that are from their parents, you know what I mean? But yeah, it's definitely, I feel the grind is on right now. I feel like we're at that circle where it's, it needs to be reintroduced. We need to be reintroduced, you know what I'm saying? So that's, that's important to get you know, to them, you know what I'm saying? And thank God that we're still here doing this, that we're able to play and, and show them how we did it and how it's done. Because a lot of things have changed, you know, since we started. Yeah, I would say that, you know, the fans that we've built, the foundation, I mean, it's a, you know, it's, it's a large group of people around the world, different countries, different cities, uh, new friends, and, you know, we've built families our own families and you know uh, of course we our lives have changed from living in the Bronx living in Brooklyn you know we have our own places I mean we have our companies I mean we're we work together and and we've created this huge body of work and I'm really excited now about you know this project because I think it's going to be the beginning of the next let's say era of MAW uh, uh, so um I'm just really grateful. I, I feel that we're blessed. That's it. I mean, I mean, thank God for everything He's put it in our way, and and, uh, and you know, um, I'm just really uh, content with what we've done all these years. I, I'm satisfied. You know, I feel that we've really made a statement, a musical statement that will be around forever, and uh, just happy to be able to touch people's lives and make them feel good. Thank you